What is up ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, it's your boy Goblin and today we are coming in with a hoot and a holler. Today we're coming in with a video talking about some of the shittiest Xanax that I've ever been sold. Hope you guys enjoy this video, drop a like if you do, and without further ado, let's dive right into it. So, listen, this video happened fairly recently. This was, I, I, not even fairly, this was actually probably one of the most recent stories ever, right? This happened while I was up on vacation, quote unquote vacation, for court, right? The week that I was gone, the week that the acid series that I just posted came from, right? By the way, hey, fuck the intro, dude. We're just sliding right into this story. But either way, back on topic. So, this took place... I, what, was that already, like, two weeks ago? Holy shit, dude. That was almost two weeks ago now. Either way, this is pretty recent. But, the first night I got there, right? The first night I drove up north to, for my court date, before I ended up staying in the Marriott Hotel that I made my whole acid trip series on, uh, I actually spent one night in a red roof. And on that first night, it was a shit show. But one of the things that I did on that first night was I knew that I was going to be tripping, right? I knew that I was going to end up tripping at that point. I didn't pre-plan it, but that night I got there, I'd already hit up my plug. He told me he had tabs. He just couldn't get me that night, right? So I knew I was going to be tripping at this point. So I was like, okay, I'm going to get some Xanax just in case. Not for me, but I know Miss Goblin wanted some, and also in case anyone else wanted some. Like, for example, Peter, I think, even asked for a bar. But... At this point, I was I was kind of in need of some, so I kept it in mind, and I went over to Nathan's house. For those guys who watch Coke Chronicles, you might remember Nathan. He had a garage kind of situation, kind of a setup that was like a, like Cody's setup, right? Where everyone would go over, and he had like a couch, and he had a couple chairs and a table. I mean, all play cards and smoke some weed, and there would be a bunch of random people that would show up there. And I happened to go over there with Miss Goblin and Kyle, right? So myself, Miss Goblin, and Kyle, we, we all go over to Nathan's house. And we're chilling there, and there's this guy who we're going to call Dan. Dan's someone I went to high school with. I was never super tight with him, but he was, uh, I don't know. He's a rapper, okay? I'm just going to put it at that. He's a rapper, but I hadn't seen him in a long time. And I say that because it's going to get relevant in a little bit. But I, I dap him up. I'm like, I'm like, oh, what's up, Dan? You know, I haven't seen you in a long time. How you been? How you living? He's like, oh, what's going on, you know? And I, I kind of walked in in the middle of a conversation that him and Nathan were having. So I kind of let them get back to it. And he mentions that he's getting some Zans, right? He's like, oh, I'm about to go get some bars. And I already knew someone that I could have maybe got some from anyways. But considering he was going to get some already, I was like, wait. I could just grab some with him, right? Like, I could just uh, grab some bars with him. This could be perfect. So I ask him, I'm like, yo, Dan, where are you going to get these bars? Like, what's the price on them? And he starts gassing them up. He's like, oh, they're these script bars, dude. They're super fire, bro. You're not going to regret paying the price, dude. They're super gas, right? So I'm like, all right, just tell me how much for, like, three of them. And he's like, I could probably get you, like, three for 20. They're, like, script ones. And he keeps emphasizing that they're script. So I'm like, okay, for sure, bro. Sounds good, you know? Like, I, I mean, I, I don't expect real script. I, I Like, I'm not expecting out of a real pharmacy pill bottle. But for the price he's charging, I'm at least expecting something decent. But... He then says, you know, I'm not going to grab him for another, like, 30, 45, so let's smoke. Me, of course, I'm like, bet. So we all chill out. We're smoking a little bit. We're hanging out and chatting. And he mentions, he's talking about some, like, oh, like, he's talking about, he, listen, every time this guy comes over, A, he's one of those guys who plays his own music at the function, which is a problem, okay? It's totally cool if you're a rapper. That's great, dude. I've had a lot of friends who make great music. This guy's not one of them, though, and he would play his own shit at the function all the time, and it was such a problem. One time, Kyle went off on him for it he was like dude turn this shit off and he got like really quiet he was like oh he was like oh damn dude he got it, it was actually kind of awkward it was really fucked but it honestly dude he, he just plays his own shit every time it's really bad but in this particular instance, he actually didn't do that. So I was a little grateful. But he, he would always talk about some, like, crazy, like, potential feature. Like, I remember last summer it was a Drake feature. Now it's, like, Tory Lanez. I don't know, dude. He'd always name drop some crazy-ass, like, feature. Be like, yeah, dude, I'm, man, you have no idea who's him at the end. Man, it's probably get crazy out here, dude. Like, okay. He would always go a little far with it. So looking back on it now, I should have known that these Zans are going to be foo as fuck. But I... I didn't really care, you know, I was like, you know, I've known this kid for a long time, I've never really bought bars from him, and I know he does like his pills, I think, so maybe these could be decent, and at the end of the day, I'm, I'm losing like 20, 30 bucks, right? 
So he goes, right? He eventually, we finish smoking this blunt. And he's like, all right, I'm going to go grab these shits. And then we'll meet up after I grab them. So I give him the money in advance, right? I think nothing of it. I give him the money and he goes to grab them. Now, we chill out at Nathan's house a little longer. We're kind of hanging out with him, just chatting it up, because it had been a while since I'd seen Nathan, right? Nathan's a good buddy of mine, and I missed him. I know that Kyle doesn't hang out with him a ton. He usually would only hang out with him when I'm in town. So I I was chatting with him a little bit, just seeing how he's doing, and eventually we all hopped back in my car and drove back to my hotel, right? And we were chilling at this hotel spot, and... Man himself, Dan, hits me up. I almost forgot the name I gave him. I almost said his real name, but I was like, wait, I can't do that. So Dan hits me up, and he's like, hey, I got these bars, but would you mind throwing me, like, a little bit for gas? Because my car guzzles gas. And I'm like, yeah, no problem, you know? Just uh, go ahead and pull up. Here's where I'm at. And he's like, okay, I'll be there in, like, 20 minutes. So I'm chilling out, and this hotel, listen, this hotel sucked, okay? I'm not going to beat around the bush. This was the worst Red Roof experience ever. I only spent one day there, you know? I only spent, like, 24 hours there, not really. Uh, And it it was the worst. Normally, I go to the Red Roof, and it's not that bad, right? Like, yes, it's a little more ghetto than the other hotels, but it's not that bad most of the time. This time around, I felt like I was at a Motel 6, and there is a distinct difference between a Motel 6 and a Red Roof. A Red Roof is typically drug dealers. A Motel 6 is prostitutes, and those bring different kinds of business sometimes, you know? So you gotta be wary of that. But this time, the Red Roof had the Motel 6 business, it felt like. It was really fucked up, and I I wasn't a fan of it. So, back on topic here, right? We're chilling out in this room. And Dan hits me up and says he's got these bars. So I wait the 15 or 20 minutes. We're hanging out. We smoke a blunt. And Dan shoots me a text saying he's here. So I go outside, right? I I go out to the parking lot. And I'm like, okay, where is he at? I see him sitting in his car. So I walk up to the window. I throw him in a little bit of extra gas money. And he has these bars just in his hand. They're not in a bag. I think nothing of it, right? I'm just like, whatever. I'm in a rush. Hand them to me. So he drops them in my hand and leaves. And I go back inside, right? I go back in my hotel room and I go back upstairs. And we're chilling because I was on a second floor hotel room, right? So we go back to my hotel room. Or I go back to my hotel room. And, and you know, Kyle is also chilling there with Miss Goblin. And they, they're they not too interested in the bars. Miss Goblin kind of wanted one. But I, me being, you know, I, not a big advocate for bars, I was like, listen... The only reason I'm buying these is in case my trip goes poorly, because I haven't tripped in a really long time. But, I listen, I'm the tab gladiator, okay? I'm the tab terminator, all right? I did great. I had a wonderful time. I look forward to my next trip. I really actually do. I mean that. But back on topic here. I bought these in because I was, I was a little fearful. I was like, okay, just in case. And I'd never done that before. Not even my first time tripping did I, did I really do that. But... Either way, I grab these, and I get back in the hotel room, and I open the nightstand drawer, and I'm about to put them in. And I look at my nightstand, and I'm just like, dude, these don't look right from afar. So I pull them out, and I notice immediately there's no writing on them. Like, there is no imprint, and they're chunky motherfuckers. And I'm like, okay... I've actually gone to a pharmacy and picked up someone's prescription before and taken pills out of that bottle. This is not what a prescription Xan looks like. And I know that they're blue nowadays. These fuckers were not blue, okay? These fuckers were chunky with no engra- no writing on them at all. So I immediately hit up Dan and I'm like, yo, like, do you think I'm stupid? And he's like, what do you talk about? And I, I immediately, I try to break one of these in half. And when I break it in half, it breaks into quarters without me doing so, right? It's so poorly pressed and fragile that it just breaks into quarters. And I'm like, oh my god, what the fuck am I actually popping, right? Like, this is fucked, you know? I'm looking at it and I'm just like, dude, this is... This is absolutely horrible. So I text him and I'm like, dude, are you fucking stupid? Like, how dumb do you think I am? And I take one of these quarters and I put it on my tongue. Because I know that one of the best ways to test... It's not 100% a reliable way. It still could be cut. But a good way to test whether there's a good amount of actual alprazolam... I think that's how it's pronounced. In the bar is to put a little bit on your tongue and just see how it tastes. Real alprazolam has such a god-awful taste. You'll want to either swallow it or spit it out within the next, like, half second. It's terrible. I hate it. I think it's rancid. It's disgusting, right? You get used to it after a long time, but it's it's always gross. It's never a good taste, right? So I put this thing on my tongue, and it's got a very light Alpraz taste, right? It, it it almost tastes like fucking nothing, you know? And it, it had this weird little aftertaste that wasn't necessarily normal. And I texted him, I'm like, dude, 
Listen, if you really needed thirty dollars that bad, you just could have asked me. You know, like I'm sorry. And I, I, I listen. I was kind of mad. So I was kind of baking him at this point. I was like, I don't have feature ain't hit yet, but like, come on, dude. Like, do you think I'm a fucking moron? Like, I, I'm a crap. Like, dude, I do a lot of drugs. Like, you picked the wrong guy to sell shitty, like, fake Zans to. I'm not stupid, right? So he's like, bro. And word for word, this is what he says. He goes, my Mexican homie. And I'm like, what? Who the fuck is Mexican homie? And he's like, bro, my Mexican homie gets the scripts from his family in Mexico. And I'm like, okay. Shut the fuck up, right? Okay, listen. And he sends me this picture off Google. And it's off Google, right? The first image when you Google Mexican Xanax. This is what you get. It's like the pill bottle. And he sends you this picture, and he's like, bro, Mexico Zans. Look. And I'm like, okay, where's the bottle they came out of? And he's like, bro, they're from Mexico, dude. I swear to God, bro. They're real Mexican Zans. And I'm like, listen, dude. In my head, I'm thinking, like, dude, whoever his homie is just has a god-awful press, right? They can't press any, any you know, uh, letters into anything, and it's low quality, not a very strong press, and it pressed some boo-boo shit like this. But I'm not going to say that to him. I'm just like, dude, listen, if you really needed the fucking money that bad, like, you just could have begged him. I'm very offended, right? And he tries to call me. So I pick up the phone and I'm like, what, like, what do you want? Right? Like, I'm, I'm not trying to get, it's 30 fucking dollars, dude. Not, not even, it was like 25 bucks. So I was like, you know, I'm not, I'm not really that upset. Like, yes, I got taxed. Yes, I got fucked and no one's taking any of these shits. No one ended up taking any of them. I threw them all away. They were fucked. Right? But either way, I, I'm looking at these things. I'm just like, they're so fucked. And he's he calls me and he's like, dude. I swear to God, my Mexican homie, and I'm like, bro, like, don't call me again if you're gonna still lie, like, if you're straight up like, okay, I got him from the plug and the kind of shit, then whatever, bro, I understand, but like, if you're gonna sit here and still bullshit me, he's like, dude, they, he got him shipped, only one batch from Mexico, and I'm like, yeah, dude, okay, bud, for sure, dude, like, these, like, there's nothing in these fuckers, bro, it's, it's very obvious to tell that someone pressed these in their garage, right, not an actual company that ever touched these, but either way, this guy calls me, and I, I block his number, I'm like, don't fucking call me again, dude, because he just, he keeps saying stupid shit, and he calls me off a second phone number, and I answer, because I don't realize it's him, and I'm like, hello, and he just goes, bro, and I'm like, absolutely not, dude. Shut the fuck up, right? And I hang up again. Because, listen, if he admitted they were fake, like I just said, I would have been cool with it, right? I would have I not been cool with it, but I would have I been less upset about it. But the fact that he capped all the way to the very end is what made me pissed, right? That's what bothered me even more. But fuck that guy. I ended up throwing those little fuckers in the toilet and flushing them, dude. I let nobody touch those bars. They were god-awful. But I ended up not needing them because I had a wonderful trip. But, hey... Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Drop a like if you did. Thank you all for tuning in, and I will see you guys tonight on stream. Peace out, gamers.